What's up, it's Kyle with the query. When working in SQL, there's a lot of situations where you need to extract just part of a piece of text, whether it's everything to the left or right of a certain character or between two characters. For example, it could be everything after the at sign in an email address. In this video, I'm gonna show you a few different ways of doing this. So let's hop over to BigQuery and go through some examples. Hello, hello. All right, so for our first example, let's start simple and just say we want to extract everything to the left of the at sign in an email address. So what I've done here is uploaded this random list of email addresses that I generated with Python. So what we'd want to extract is like this part of it, this part of it for each of these email addresses. So to do this, we're gonna need two different functions combined together. In BigQuery, there's a function called left, and it's also in many other SQL environments. And the other one is called string position. The left function is pretty simple. It just takes two arguments. The first one is the column, and the second one is like the number of characters over that you wanna go. So for example, if we wanted to extract the first 10 characters of an email address, it would look like this. As you look at this, you can probably tell the problem is we don't know the position that this at symbol is gonna be at in each one of these email addresses. So we need something dynamic that's going to fill that out for us in this position that we put the 10 slot in. So luckily there's a function that does this for us. It's called string position or stir post. And what it does is it takes the column as the first argument and the first character that it finds for whatever you put in the second argument, that's the position that it's gonna return. So here, if we do stir post email at sign, it's gonna give us 12, 24, 12, 12. That's how many characters over this at symbol is in each one of these email addresses. And this is what we need to pass into the left function to give us what we want. So here, let's take the left function email, and then we're gonna pass this into that function. Cool. So that's giving us everything to the left of that position. So what we need to do is add a minus one to this to get just what we want. So it's gonna start from one less over. Perfect, boom. If you're learning something from this, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you can get more videos recommended like this to you. Moving on. For our second example, let's say we want to extract everything to the right of the at symbol. This is a little trickier than the first example, but I'll explain it so you can understand it. So in a lot of SQL environments, there's a function called write, which takes the column name and then a second argument that is how many characters to the right you want. So if we did email five here, it would give us the last five characters in each one of these email addresses. So you might be thinking kind of like our first example, we can just put the string position of the at symbol in here and it would give us our answer. So let's try that. Okay, this is not really what we wanted. And the problem is that the string position function counts how many characters over something is from the left, but we need how many characters over it is from the right. If there was a formula that told us the length of the entire string, we could use that and subtract what string position was giving us and get our answer. So there's another function called length. So I'll just show you what that returns. So this is the length of this entire email address. And so if we do length minus string position of this at sign, it gives us the number of characters over from the right that this at sign is. And so what we can do is pass this into the second argument of the right function. So do write email, and then let's pass this in. Boom. Is this right? Yeah, hotmail.io that.edu, yeah, so this is working. Now what happens if there's no at sign in the email address? If we have an invalid email. I inserted a few invalid email addresses into another table here where I'll show you what happens. So if we run this, our second argument in left cannot be negative. So it's erroring out in this function because this 
is returning a negative number. So let's go over to the documentation and see what's going on with this. So if we go to string position, takes two, it returns a zero if the second argument is not found. So what's happening here is it's not finding this at symbol. And so this is returning a zero and then we're subtracting one from it and it's giving us a negative. Ideally, you'd wanna build out some kind of process that catches invalid email addresses before they get to this point. But one thing you can do is just use a case statement and see if there's an at symbol in it. And if there is, go forward. If there's not, make it invalid. So let's just add a case statement to this. So I'll show you how it works. Case when email basically has an at sign in it somewhere then do that function for us. Let's format it a little nicer. Else invalid end. Cool. And I'll just show you where that was happening, where email is not like at sign. Like not, not like. Okay, so these are the two invalid email addresses I put in here. And for our username, it's just saying invalid. Okay, so that's how you extract everything from the left and the right of a specific character. And if you just stopped here and remembered this, that would be a big win. But there's another function I wanna show you for extra credit. What if you wanted to extract everything between two characters? Like for example, if you wanted everything from the at sign to the first period after that at sign as the domain name, like gmail.com. You just wanted the Gmail part of it. You might be able to accomplish this with a combination of the right and the left functions, but there's a more powerful function I wanna to introduce to you called substring. This one takes at least two arguments with an optional third one. So the first one is gonna be the email. The second one is gonna be the number of characters over that you wanna start from. And the third one is the length of that. So if you wanted, if you put three in that second one and five in the third one, it would start over three characters and then give you the next five characters from there. So I'll show you how that works. So over here, if we put substring email three, five, it gives us this. So it starts three characters over and gives us five characters from there. So let's just play around with this a little bit. What if we did substring email, and then we passed in the string position of that at sign. Let's see what that gives us. So if we do str post email at sign. Okay, so this can be kind of used like the right function. If we put string position here, it's gonna start from wherever that at sign is. And if you don't put anything in the third, it just gives you the rest of the string. So. Here it's starting at this at sign. If we wanted it to start one more over, so everything after the at sign, we would just have to put a plus one here. And now you effectively have the same thing as what the right function was giving us. Okay, so I reformatted this a little bit. And so what we need to pass in for the third argument is the length of what we want to extract. So for hotmail, it would be seven. For whatever this is, it'd be five. And so that's what we need to figure out for this third parameter as our next step. So what you might think we could do is just do the string position of this period and subtract the string position of this at symbol, which would give us these characters. And that works under a lot of circumstances, but I'll show you why that doesn't work here with email addresses. So if we do the string position of the period minus the string position of the at sign, it's gonna give us this because the third argument in substring cannot be negative. Let's just put this in a separate column so we can see what's going on. The problem is this email, kyle.malone, where there's a dot before the at sign is messing us up. So you see how this returns negative seven. So it's catching the first dot, which is what string position does it finds the first instance of whatever character here and returns that. So it's returning five. And then this is giving us like 12 or something. And it's doing five minus 12 and giving us this negative number, which is not what we want. If you have a string that you don't have this problem with, then you could do it this way. But for this specific example, I'll show you how to fix this for email addresses. 
So let's go back to our previous example where we just have two parameters here and it's giving us everything after the at sign. Now to find the length that we need to pass in, what we can do is we can pass the output of this, which is this, into string position and find the string position of the period. So here that gives us eight, six, and, and all my dummy email addresses are actually six, but it's giving us what we want for the length. So we can actually pass this entire thing into the third parameter here and get what we want. So let's format this in a little bit more space. And let's pass this into here and see what happens. All right, this is really close. What it's giving us is mostly what we want, but there's just a period at the end. So what it's doing is that length is one more than we want. And so what we need to do is uh, subtract one from the length. All right, boom, Hotmail, whatever these random numbers are. Let's just order by rand just to show you that it's working correctly. Okay, so this is what we wanted to extract from all these and it looks like it's working correctly. You might be thinking, why can't I just use left and right for this instead of substring? Well, you actually can use left and right for this specific example, but I wanted to introduce substring to you just so you have another tool in your tool belt. All right, now you'll know what to do if you ever need to extract everything to the left or to the right of a specific character or between two characters in SQL. There are also other ways you can do similar things in a more powerful way with using something called regular expressions or regex which is a little bit more complicated and I'll make another video on that. I think just starting here simple is the best way to learn. Watching videos like this is great for learning concepts, but if you really wanna learn this, the only way is to practice. So if you wanna get some good practice in, I uploaded these SQL queries and this data set to a Google Drive and I will link to that in the video description below. So you can download those and upload them to whatever SQL environment you want and practice these queries yourself. I also have some videos on YouTube that'll teach you how to get set up on BigQuery if you wanna practice on this environment, uh, which I'll link to those as well. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Hope you got something out of it. If you liked it, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in another video.